Hi, my name is Tom. I'm the person that made that first video. After watching the first one for a few times, I realized I didn't make anything at all. All I did was take some boxes and made them into Swiss cheese. So let's try to make something in this one. For this video, we will make a simple mug. A mug is a simple object to make using a few basic tools that was briefly covered in the first video. It consists of only two parts if you block it out, which is the hollowed cylinder for the body and the handle piece. It doesn't take too long to make one, so it's pretty easy. It's a little simple though, so we're going to try to make it a little more sophisticated. So to begin, we create our base with the circle tool. Remember that the circle tool draws from the center out. I usually start from the center where the axis meet, but anywhere else is fine. The next step is to give it a little height by pulling it out with the push and pull tool. You can use the push and pull on any flat surface that you are hovering over and make adjustments until you get what you need. After setting the height, the obvious next step is to hollow out the mug with the offset tool. The offset tool, if you can remember, can create a mimic of any flat surface that you are hovering over and can adjust the size to be bigger or smaller than the original. But since I have the mouse and keyboard, I'm going to do something a little different. First, I will reduce the height of the mug and just imagine it that this is the bottom of the mug. I want to create a small taper in, so in order to do that, I will need to use the scale tool to make the top surface bigger. The scale tool is pretty neat. When active and a surface selected, the scale tool gives you a boundary box with several points around the borders. You can select and scale the surface or an object in that point's direction. To scale uniformly, hold the control button and scale. You will notice that red indicator line in the center will have one end in the center of the boundary box. Letting go of the control will draw the red line indicator to the opposite side of that boundary box. With that in mind, I will continue the push, pulling, and the scaling process until I complete the entire body of the mug, all without using the offset tool. So now we come to the handle part. To me, I see the handle as a separate piece, so now I can begin to play around with the rectangle tool. From it, I can make a pretty blocky handle. Just with a couple of segments, I can make a handle pretty quickly. Honestly, this handle looks a little too blocky and plain, so let's try something new. For the handle, we are going to use the follow me tool to create it. It is a super awesome way to create a model to follow a path, kind of wrapping and extending itself along that path. As a quick example, I made this path on the ground and I'm going to create a tube or pipe that follows this path. After creating the path, I just need to create that wrapping surface, move it so that it's lined up perpendicularly to one of the ends of the path, and select the follow me tool. Now that I can go back and click on the face of that wrapping surface and carefully follow my cursor along that path. The wrapping surface can be of any shape so you can easily create organic objects with the follow me tool. With that in mind, let's use the same technique to quickly create our handle. For this, I'm going to use a basic arc to create that path for my handle, adjust it a bit so it looks proper. Next, I want a simple wrapping surface so a rectangle works fine. After creating it, I have to be sure that the wrapping surface is lined perpendicularly with the path that I want it to follow along. It's typically better to if that one of the ends of the path is directly centered with the wrapping surface, so I just need to move my surface until so. After that's aligned correctly, I just need the follow me tool. Select the wrapping surface and follow along the path. Be careful when you're following along a path. If you navigate your cursor too far away from the intended path, the surface may snap to other paths that you may not want, creating an unwanted object. And that's our mug handle. Notice how it's blue? When an object in SketchUp shows up blue, that means it's inside out. Typically, you would want the outside of the model to show up white in SketchUp and blue on the inside. To fix this, simply select the blue areas, right-click to bring up the extra menus, and select Reverse Face. Note that selecting white surfaces and reversing its face will turn it blue, so be aware of what's being selected. Now that the handle is modeled, we just need to attach it to the mug by simply moving it into the mug. After aligning it, we can make both of the objects into one group so that it can be selected as one entire thing. To do so, first select all the models. You can drag select, but to be sure, I would just triple click all those parts with the select tool. To make multiple selection with the select tool, have your select tool selected, triple click on the first object until everything is selected. 
You can tell by everything is selected when all the edges turns blue, including the not visible ones. Then, hold the shift key and a plus and minus indicator will appear next to the cursor and you can continue to select the next object. After all the objects are selected, just right click on one of the objects and select make group from the menu. And then it will create one boundary box of over all the objects. Now you can select that mug as one object and you can do anything with it now. And that concludes this video and I'll see you next time.